Hey, well, welcome to church. I know that Landon did all that. And, and Pastor Nate, welcome. And I'm excited to minister this morning. And I say minister, um, not as a, as a weird term, but I believe that though that's what the Lord wants to do to us this morning. Is, what's up, brother? How are you? Jamal's in the house. Jamal. It's, uh, it's awesome to see a young man serving Jesus and uh, loving the Lord. Went to Rama and he's here this morning with us. Oh, we're visiting from Tulsa. So that's cool, I guess, right? <laughs> so um, I don't know. I just threw it all together there. Anyway, we're going to throw some stuff out, um, and, and I believe that the Lord just really wants to minister some things. Oh, I'm so excited. There's so much on the inside uh, right now that I, I think, uh, let me just say this. The Lord wants to come to your house. Think about that. That you know he can be in the house and you not know it? That's what's crazy. And um, And even like, when we're together in worship and we're together, we can sometimes not recognize his presence or not recognize what he's wanting to do because of all the things that are going on on the inside. Because of all the noise and all the cares and all the offenses of life. And um, I, I, I believe the Lord wants to come to our house. And he wants, his presence wants to dwell in the city, uh, not of David, listen, but the city of Nate. In other words, everything that has the busyness of my life, the getting it, the going in and the going out, the, the, the every part, the city, the family, the, where my house, where my home, where my, where my business, where everything in my life, he wants to come to that place. And, uh, and, he, and he, he does that. He brings his presence. He brings what, what would be, in a sense, light right, uh, uh, to, to our place uh, through, through his words, and, and, and I believe through his words, you know, where, where his words are, where words are, so is the person, <laughs> you know, in other words, uh, you, you sense them, You're, you can feel love even through a phone, how many of you know you can feel love even through a phone, across the sea, uh, with somebody could be serving uh, I, I, in, you know, in, in the military, and and just that phone call, just and now a FaceTime, but just a phone call, or even listen, even a letter. People used to wait by the mailbox every day, just hoping for a letter from a loved one. Why? Because their love could be expressed, their presence. They they'd hold those things close to them, and I just believe that that's what God's word really wants to do to us and so that's why I say when I'm gonna this what we're gonna talk about this morning we're gonna we're gonna talk about the word of God let's just receive it as that the very presence the very word his love towards us that is the light of men it is our light it is it is him his ability in our lives it's it's him greater than all the what's it's him greater than the offenses amen so father we thank you this morning uh, for your word. We thank you that we have ears that hear. And we just ask you, Holy Spirit, to, to be the teacher today. And uh, impart uh, uh, not just uh, what would be um, understanding, but Father, wisdom from heaven that just is beyond our understanding, that is the very avenue to which peace would flow into our lives. We thank you for your word this morning, and, and that you would be the teacher, and that we would be under you. We humble ourselves to hear from you this morning. We thank you that we hear, and we say that we do hear. You can just say that. Say, I do hear my Father's voice. In Jesus' name, amen. And so we've been in this series. We started, um, really, we've really been talking a lot about voices, right? And, um, and just how there's so many voices in this world. And I was actually got to talk with a, a friend yesterday. I was over in Oklahoma setting up some uh, deer stands for the upcoming season. All right. Um, but you know there's nothing like the word of God, not a deer stand, not a deer, not a big buck. There's nothing that satisfies. And in just a little five-minute conversation uh, with, a, with a friend of mine, a young man, um, just talking about the voices and making decisions for the Lord and, and figuring out how to lead his life. Uh, jump in, closing a cattle gate, jumping in the back of that truck uh, with him or on the way to the next property uh, to get the gate. It just was like God was just talking, you know, and that was better than the buck pictures that we got, you know, there were some big ones. All right. Anyway, but that's the word of God to you. 
it lights us. And we've been talking about voices. And, and this young man was talking about how uh, it just, man, it just seems like there's so many decisions I need to be making right now in my life. And it's like, it's like they seem weighty because I'm a young man and it determines like tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. And I think we, we, it would be good of, of us to, to weigh some of our decisions even like that. You know, the decisions and our choices really do uh, have a lasting impact down the road. And so this young man, you know, he realized that. And so we were just talking about that. So we've been talking about voices, but then just really, um, <clears throat> and we've been in this, this passage, and I can't seem to, to, to shake it. It's First John chapter 4. And, uh, and we've been talking. So let's just go ahead and uh, turn there this morning in our Bibles, First John chapter 4. And it talks, tells us to test the spirits. And if you're taking notes this morning, uh, the title of this morning's message is not the, this is only a test. Right? Have you ever seen that? This is only a test. In other words, this is only a test. We're trying to make sure that if we had to get something to you, we get it to you. Let me tell you that what I'm going to talk about is not this is only a test. It is this is the only test. This is the only test. What I'm going to talk to you, if we could just pass this test, just this test, uh, we would see uh, fulfillment in our lives. We would see um, success, true success. We would see uh, joy and peace and, and all these things if we would just pass this test. This is what I'm going to talk to you about this morning, the only, the only test. And, and so we've been, in, the, in 1 John chapter 4, he tells us this, he says, to test the spirits, okay? Um, let me pull up my notes, that might be helpful this morning. Uh, he tells us to test, beloved, do not believe every spirit. And we, we established this in the weeks uh, before, but that word spirit is a very neutral word. It's, it's pneuma in, in the Greek, and, and it can be a spirit of, of evil, like spirit, like a, a, a demonic spirit, or it, depending on how it's, uh, what is before or after it, that's what uh, gives it uh, its meaning, right? So like the spirit of God or, or the spirit of Antichrist, right? And so it, it means that which gives life. It's also translated wind or breath. And so we've been talking about who's breathing on you, right? And so he said, don't believe every breath or don't believe everything that is trying to bring you life. How many of you know there's sometimes things that are speaking to you that are trying to bring you life, and they're not the thing that would bring you life. It's, it, it's, it's, it's a counterfeit, right? Um, but we listen to it. But he said, don't listen to every breath. He said, test them right? <sighs> test your breath. And I would even say this, test your breath, test the breath before you speak. As a pastor, sometimes you have prayer line, you know, and after you minister, how many of you know, like after you talk, you got like that cotton mouth, like a lot. And then, you know, you're like oh, horse breath. <laughs> you know, okay. All right. Y'all, y'all gonna like, am I the only one that ever has BO or, 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 bad breath. No, I don't think so. Uh, it happens. And so you, you, before you want to pray with somebody, because you want them to get what is they're supposed to get, not, not the horse breath, you would maybe hopefully have a drink of water and somebody would hand you a piece of gum, like maybe something fresh would come out, right? Uh, but you know, sometimes we, we say things and, and we don't test our breath. We don't test the breath before we speak it. So we come into agreement and when we come into agreement with any breath, with any spirit, when I come into agreement with it, I come under it. I'm under the authority of the breath. I'm under the authority of the spirit that I agree with. And, and, and the, the, this uh, first, first John chapter 4 talks all about uh, these two spirits that are warring. And last week we talked about the war of worlds. Like, there's a war of worlds, and you know, it, that's not a new idea. That's, that's an, not, not even an idea. It is a truth. It is the truth. And you've seen it displayed as good and evil, or light and dark. It is, there is a war of worlds, and he defines it here in 1 John chapter 4 as Christ versus Antichrist. Um, Christ as in the anointing, and I love this, this picture here, and I'm, I'm kind of doing a little review, but it's come, it always comes out different, and it's heard in a different way. It always comes differently, all right? And so Christ means the anointing, okay, or the anointed one. Antichrist means replacing that, 
replacing, and so Christ is also the person, not in here way, the way that they're talking about it, that it's referred to the person of Christ. So it is the person that gave or brought something or inferred something upon us that we couldn't do for ourselves. Back in the day, back in the day, in Bible days, before there was, when they established a king, they had to be anointed. And, and to be anointed, somebody else had to pour upon them so that they could stand in a new place or a new office and operate in a new way. And so they would be anointed. The priest would anoint a king. And this is what happened when Jesus came to you and me. You know, last week we talked about not becoming like culture, right? And like just how easy it is to like fade in to what the rest of the world looks like. And, and we begin to call good evil and and evil good, and, and we don't really look any different. The salt that has lost its savor, and, and the standard we once held is no longer held, and so on and so forth. And our hearts are getting fuller and fuller. And this is what I'm talking, wanting to talk about, about getting God's voice and God's presence back into our life. And this key to success or fulfillment is simply being led by the Spirit of God. It sounds really fancy. It sounds really ultra-deep spiritual. But it is the thing that he said that my children know my voice. So this is something that a child of God must know, and it is a lie from the pit of hell that you don't recognize his voice. You do. He gave it to you, and he speaks to you in the heart. And this is why the Bible says in Proverbs 4, 23, guard your heart. Don't let things get in it. And right now, more than ever before, the enemy is trying to get things into our heart. Because if you can clog your ear, spell heart, H-E-A-R-T, heart. Take the two letters off the end. What does it spell? Ear. If he can clog your ears, if he can put something in here, why don't you whisper to me? I don't even think I'm talking loud, but I'm talking really loud right now. I can't hear that I'm talking loud. Why? Because my ears are clogged. And if you would whisper to me and you would speak to me, I couldn't hear it. I thought about having a a, a demonstration of, of giving some great prizes away and having people put in some earplugs because today we have a, a gun shoot for the men's, uh, the men's group. Frontline Men's has a, has a skeet shoot. So you got to have ear protection. And I thought about giving away some great things on the stage today, but just because there's so much to share, I was like, I can't do that. I can't. There's so many things, thoughts that enter my mind to do in, in a short window of time. And just, just told them all they have to do is listen to me. And I would stand behind them and I would tell them, I have this for you and I have this for you. And, 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 and you know what? All I need you to do is raise your right hand if you would like this. Just listen to my voice. And you know what they wouldn't hear? They wouldn't hear my voice. And it would be true that I don't know and I can't hear Pastor Nate's voice. That's true. But it's not true that you don't have the ability or the gift to hear. The truth is, your ears clog. The truth is, our ears get clogged. The truth is, our hearts get filled with things that they're never meant to be filled with. And the enemy wants to do that because he wants to lead your life by something other than the voice of God, the spirit of God, which is given to a child of God to be led. Glory to God. I have the ability to hear. Somebody say that. I can hear God's voice. And so the enemy wants to get things into us so that we, our heart is clogged. Our heart is clogged and his voice becomes weaker and weaker and weaker in our lives. And so we're talking this morning about the only test. The only test. And I have so many scriptures, so I'm just, believe with me. Uh, okay, so we were back on the anointing. So we were talking about Christ, the anointing, that which was inferred or put, poured upon a king. He, he couldn't do it to himself. He could now operate in a new way. We were talking about culture. Yeah, that's how I'm, I'm get back there. All right. So we were talking about culture and how, like, we become like culture. We become, we become like it. Uh, but, but, you know, it can almost be discouraging. The message you heard last week, if you didn't hear the spirit in which it was given, and it was like God was, like he was present here ministering a hard message. If you, you need to go back and listen to it if you haven't listened to it, because the Bible says the wounds of a friend, or, or, or in other words, not even a wound, but like the correction, it's, it's to save us from destruction. It's the love of God, right? He tells us, a, probably don't use that word, um, a little, little bit, the, the B word, turd, Bass, okay, the bastard, 
Okay, just that be easier maybe just to say it. The Bible says, the, King James says, that a bastard is undisciplined. In other words, a child that is illegitimate, there we go, got that up, um, came from another father, is without correction. There's no love there. Wow. So love corrects. And when I realize that, it's a whole lot easier to lead my children, lead my family, and so on and so forth. And so anyway, the, what we were talking about in that, what would be a corrective word, really the Lord shining light, point correction is not a, a slap on the wrist. It is pointing in the right direction. And when I see it like that, uh, that's wonderful. But listen, if I have that verse that Paul says, why do I do the things that I don't want to do? And all I can focus on is my do instead of, listen, this is what we're, this this, this little passage and what we're talking about is a series or of independence, not independence, but in dependence. Like he that is in you, First John 4, 4, is greater. He that is in you is greater than the spirit, okay, that's in this world. And so we, there's a lot of breaths in this world, but there is a breath on the inside of you that can, can direct your life and be greater, or that word greater, mega, so much greater than all the voices that are trying to tell you and I other things. Replace Christ. And, and, and so Christ, this word Christ or anointing, um, it, it, that which is put upon us, is so it Christ, it's the person that came and put upon us, poured upon us what we couldn't pour upon ourselves. No, just like a king could not anoint himself king, a priest had to do it and pour upon him so he could operate in a new place in a new way. And the Bible tells us that when, when if any man be in Christ, he is a, come on, help me out, a new creature. It says the old has gone, the new has come. So our identity in Christ, right, that is, there, there's some things that Christ has done for, there's a change that took place because of Christ, because of not just Christ the person, but Christ the anointing. And so when, when we understand that, I realize that these things that seem hard, I, I, my, I can do all things through Christ. So all of a sudden, I'm not dependent upon my strength, and Pastor Evan taught on this on Wednesday night, but I'm depending upon his might. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. There is a strength on the inside, and it's not about the do. It's about my eyes on who? It's about my eyes on Him. And when my eyes are on Him, I will realize that I'm not having to re... Again, so now we're Christ, and we go to Antichrist. There's a spirit in the world that is Antichrist. Anti simply meaning to replace. If you define that, it would be opposed or simply to replace. Anti. So, so to replace Christ. To replace Christ or the anointing would be that you would do it through, ah, try. Just, just go ahead and give it all you got and fail. And then when you fail, let me talk to you about how worthless you are and all that you're never going to be able to do and all the hope that you can't have because of you, 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 you. But let me tell you about a spirit that is in you. And a spirit that is in you that's greater than the spirit of the world that's around you. And the spirit that's in you that wants to direct your life and cause you to make the right decisions with the who's and the right decisions about the what's and the right decisions and, and bring to you the word concerning his word concerning every situation. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. You've heard this scripture. And so, oh, no, no, you can't go there yet. You can't go there yet. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Lord. Turn with me to Psalms 119, 162. Psalms 119, 162. And this has got to be our, and again, last week we talked about war, the war of worlds. There is a war of worlds. You know when you win a war, you get something. You know what it's called? S. P O I L. Spoil. It's the treasures of war. The treasures of war. When you win a war, like, I mean, I don't know what you, your whole take on the Persian Gulf and all that. We got some oil. I mean, whether we fought for oil or didn't fight for oil or we got something to pay us back for our expenses, and maybe some. How many of you know when you fight a war, right, 
Like, have you heard this song? I went to the end. Maybe some of y'all hadn't. Maybe y'all like just ran, ran into the church. That's okay. I'm going to enlighten you to some good days of old. All right. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Yes, I took. Come on, we start dancing. Oh, he stole from me. And it's okay if I dance because here's why it's okay if I dance. Because I'm not dancing for you. And if you knew what I got back. If you knew what I got back and if you knew what I was shouting about, you would be shouting too. And all I'm going to bring that right back in today about how our, 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 our testing and, and our agreement with other words and our agreement with other words about people cause us to be contained even within ourselves. When there was to be a sacrifice of joy and a sacrifice of praise, as it said in 2 Samuel, when the, when the presence of God was brought to the city of David, David danced before the Lord. He danced as the king to wear his garments of, of righteousness, his holy, his, his like, I'm too cool, like I'm, my status, his status left him. And Micah, uh, or Michael looked out the window and, and saw the king of the people looking like a fool. When she, but, the, but the presence of God was coming to his house. The ark of the Lord, the presence hadn't been in the city of David. The blessings hadn't been flowing. They were in another house and the blessings were there. Go read it, 2 Samuel 6. They were in somebody else's house because the presence of God was there. And the presence of God, he was bringing it home. It was coming to the city of David is coming to my house. It's coming to my house. And he blessed the people. You got to read it. It's amazing. He gave them, when he blessed, when it came back, he gave the, the people, um, he gave them bread and he gave them a piece of flesh and he gave them wine. What a type and a shadow of the presence of God brought back to us of the body of Christ. Oh, presence. And he danced before the Lord. And he comes back into the house, and I just for time's sake, I don't I have time to get to go to read it verbatim. But he comes back to this house, and Michael, uh, his wife, talks to him about his uh, his behavior. You embarrassed me, and he said, "I didn't dance for you, and you thought that was something. You thought that was something. You ain't seen nothing yet, honey." I heard Pastor Mark Hankins say this one time about this passage. He said, I'm so thankful that manhood did, get, did not get set or changed that day. <laughs> I'm thankful that he said, honey, we're gonna, I'm going to follow the Lord. I'm going to leave my house. Man, God wants to come to our house. You know what's interesting? The presence of the Lord. And your awareness of his voice, his presence, his word, kills the fear of man. And the fear of man is right now here on earth one of the strongest voices that's crippling the church. That's very much the message that you and I have been given. God not counting our sins against us. So the Bible says, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, not counting our sins against us. He has now uh, reconciled us back to God. Not counting our sins against us. He reconciled us back to God and has given to you and me the ministry of reconciliation or reconciling others to Christ. So there is a message you and I are called to carry, and it's that God did not count that against you. But yet he has given, he, Christ, he, the anointing one, has come, and, and, and if you would receive him, he would change, and, and we got to preach it strong. And, and the, 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 there is something about the anointing that you and I have to understand, it has a purpose. Christ had a purpose, and it was more than uh, salvation, as in, in the sweet by and by. Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy, the Bible says. We read this all the time, John 10, 10, right? But I have come that you might have a life and that you might have life more abundantly. Like here and now that you would have life and you would have it here more abundantly. This is God's design, that you would be able to walk in the things that he prepared before you were ever born. Before you, in Jeremiah it says, before you were born I knew you. 
it says this is this in Psalms. It says, before you were even, when you were, you were fashioned, I wrote a book of destinies about your life. Think about that. He, God is my, it says in Ephesians, that, that he's prepared good things for us to walk in. So Christ coming to you and Christ coming to us is so that, that life could be found because life is found. And what I'm, I haven't got to where I'm going to get to. Don't just hold on. I know there's a whole lot going forth. I get it. All right. But the, what I'm trying to get to is to the point of life. And life is found in the connection. Cut it off. Cut something off. Let me, let me, let me just bring a divide between you two friends. Death. Let me put something between you. Let me put something between you and God. Let me put something between a plant and, 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 its, and its branches. Death. Life is found in the connection. And this is what the war is after. And this is why when Jesus came, it was what is the key for you and I to experience life. Because when I'm connected to him, I can hear from him, right? And I, and I, I can take off I, his goal... With, even in the church, that the message we would ha- carry is, is one that would be a church that's without gloves uh, to where we can feel and without plugs in our ears to where we can hear. Like connection would be had. And I, and I know that, oh, thank you, Lord, for uh, Psalms 119. Let me get back here. Psalms 119, 162. I rejoiced at the word as one that found a great spoil. Woo! Spoil. You know what a spoil is? Spoil is, is the treasures of war. We've been talking about there's a war going on. And you know what the war ultimately is going on? Now go with me to Romans chapter 8. 8.35 uh, and then 37 through 39. It says who? Listen to this. There's a couple of things going on here that, that when I was reading this, it's like the Lord just illuminated them. Who and what? There's a who and a what. There's always a who and a what that would try to bring separation from the love of God. The love that's been shed abroad in your heart. How many of you know when somebody does something, the very love of God that has been shed abroad in your heart can, um, can kind of be a little bit in jeopardy? Like, you know, that doesn't count, suffered wrong, you know, all that stuff, right? How many of you know that sometimes there's, there is who's and there's, there, but there's not just who's, there's what's. So it's the who's and what's, and I'm talking about... Uh, being led by the Spirit of God, it's a different take than how I normally would teach how to be led by the Spirit of God. But I think it's a very simple way. Because your heart is your ear. Your heart is your ear. And if I can put a plug, and, and when I was going to put those, uh, this, this little object lesson on the ear plugs, one was going to say, offense. You know, offense is just counting a suffered wrong. And see, there's really nothing... Round it, you know, like counting is not that big a deal because you can handle one, but can you handle the one that will break you? The point about counting is, uh, here's the crazy thing is, we import, important things or things that matter to you, you count. Right? How old are you? 29. <laughs> things that matter to you, 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 we count. We count what's important. Points. I mean, you know, points count. And, and, and here's the deal. Here's how you know even if you're counting a suffered wrong. Do you have to make your point? Do you have to tell somebody your point? You're counting if you have to get across your point. Have you ever shared something with somebody and you just, you know, like, I'm, you know, I'm walking in love. Let's just talk to church people, of course, right? Um, but you're just making your point, right? Because, but you're walking in love, right? I'm talking to me here, okay? Did you know pastors deal with this? Because pastors are just people that stand in an office. And you know, sometimes you, you'll stand on a, on, a, on a stage when you're ministering to the sheep, and there's an anointing in that place that, that sometimes in your home as a, as a father or in a business place that you don't really feel like a pastor because that's not necessarily that piece. And so you have to draw on a different anointing, and that's called Christ in you, the hope of glory, the hope of everything good. So you got to pull on Christ and his word to you and his word above another word and his word above your point. I mean, just recently, I had an offense with actually our, our youth pastor, Ben. Just 
not even a little while ago. I didn't even realize it. I did realize it. I got upset about something a year ago because I saw a flashback of something. And so I made an adjustment in my schedule just to not have to constantly take a thought captive. So I, I said, you know what? I don't want to, I want to walk in love. So what I'm going to do to walk in love, I'm going to keep and, and, and make it so I don't stumble. I'm going to eliminate that connecting point. And, you know, I was talking with Ev the other night, and, and she was talking about a fence. You know, a fence is like bad breath. Somebody's got it. What is that? I mean, you know, it, whether you smile, you still stink. You flippin' stink. And you can smile, and you can tell somebody your point. But guess what? Love's, love doesn't count, and you're counting. So guess what? You're listening to some bad breath. Some breath that would like to bring a, a, what would be a separation to you. And here's the deal. Listen, Romans chapter 8. So what could separate us? Or who, it says in Romans 8.35, who could separate us from what? The war is to separate you from the love of God. God's love for you and, God, and your love for others. What's the greatest commandment? No, not love one another. Love the Lord your God, right? And he says, and the second is like unto it. And I have the, the verses here, but I'm, I, I would have to look up the actual place or thought. It's in Matthew. A couple places in the Gospels. But he sa- tells us that love the Lord your God with all your mind, all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And the second of the commandments, again, this, they say, well, Lord, what tell us, the Pharisees, well, tell us which is the greatest commandment. And he says, love the Lord your God. And he said, the second is like unto it, which is this, and love your neighbor as yourself. But you know you can't love the Lord until you know how much he's loved you. Did you know you can't love your neighbor until you know how much he's loved you? 1 John chapter 4 to verse 19, all of 1 John chapter 4, he says we love him. We, we can't do the first until we know how much we're loved. We can't do the second until we know how much we're loved. There's a parable that talks about a man who was forgiven a much and then couldn't forgive a little. I got to know how much God loves me. I got to know how much he loves me so much that he wants to come to my house. That he has to come, he wants to come to my house, and when he comes to my house, and when I come to church, and I come to a place, a word is going to be spoken, a word, his presence is going to be there, that's going to bring light, that's going to set free, that's going to, when, when the word is spoken, healing would flow, when the word is spoken, change would break, when the truth is spoken, I, there would be freedom in a place, when the truth, when the word, when he would be here, connection would be found here, and connection would be found here. What is that kind of look like to you what did Jesus come to do where is life found connection but as long as there's an offense as long as there's an offense I can't hear his word the very word that was given to me the very word that is not given on the outside but is spoken right here on the inside and he'd love to connect me to the one that he set me in contact with he'd love to connect me to him the one that's able to do above all that I could ask think or even hope or imagine the one that can do more the one that is not limited and is able the one that heals the one that brings restoration the one the one who is mega, the one who is greater, not apart from you, not in this world, and if you just got to get to that place so that you could have him work for you, just come to the, just follow the yellow brick road, follow the yellow brick road, so we can get to the Oz, the all-knowing Oz. Listen, he's on the in side of you. He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. He wants to tell you yes. He wants to tell you no here. He wants to lead and guide you into all truth. And if you'll know the truth, the result would be freedom. Oh God, help us. Help us see when we're just making our point. What's happening is we're just doing this. There is such dissatisfaction in life. 
when there's not connection. There's such a satisfaction in life when there's not connection with our Father. When I don't know how much I'm loved. And all of you things dependent upon me. And there's such a dissatisfaction in life when there's schism and there's an offense and there's a divide. Because I've been listening to the wrong voice. Because I've been counting. I wrote some thoughts down here that I think I, I, I kind of spoke of them, but I think it's important to read them. Just about, again, here's the fight. It's about Christ's love for you. So what could separate us from the love? I didn't finish that verse. What could separate us from the love of Christ? Who could separate us? So it starts in verse 35. And it goes on to say, um, in all these things, you've heard it. We are more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors through him. Doesn't that sound like something in us? The fight against you is for the love of God that has been given to you, that's in you, that's for you, working through you. Love speaks. So does Satan. And he would like to, you, to divide you and separate you and cause you to reason and, and ask you all that you know. You know what I've heard lately? Hey, what do you think about this? Maybe just because I'm a pastor, people ask me this. What do you think about everything that's going on? What do you think about Corona? What do you think about President Trump? What do you think about the elections? What do you think is going to happen in November? What do you think? 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 What if we just change that just a little bit? Let, like, let's just maybe start that today. Like, let, let this in. What does God say? What does God say about November? What does God say about your marriage? What does God say about that bill that looks too big for your paycheck? What does God say about cancer? What does God say about the person that did that to you? What does God say about your children and the way that they've been acting and they're just turning into a bunch of hellions and they're probably going to hell in a handbasket? Just like us when we were kids. What, is, what do you think? What do you know? What do you think? What do you know? What, what does God say about that? And even, you know, um, I, I've spoken this from this pulpit, you know, and, and just kind of, and, and again, making a point. You know how sometimes we say, I don't know? And again, I, and we say, well, you do know. You just haven't heard. Right? But I think it's, I think it's, I think it, it, it's a very, so there's that point, right? Um, but there's also the point that you would say, there's a way that seems right to man that leads this way. And so to say that I don't know, or I'm, I haven't heard yet, is okay. And then not be legalistic about some of these things, but Put a guard over and understand what you're saying. Again, it's the spirit, not the letter of the law. Matter of fact, it says in Romans, it says where the, oh, I can't, uh, uh, let's keep going here. Mm. Romans 8, uh, verse 37. Nay, and all these things were more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that there's not death. So you're telling me that there's a connection that would cause you to hear what he has to say that's going to lead and guide you into all that he's called you to? Listen, God's plans for your life, good plans, plans of hope and a future, good things that I've, he's prepared for you to walk in. Let me tell you, until you can say, you can say, I have kept the fight, I have finished my course, you're not done unless you want to be. There is the connection. The connection to hearing what he has. Again, the Bible tells us that his words are a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, if he wants to call you, if he wants to call you home, like that's what you get in your hearts, like I, I just want to be with Jesus. That's just where you want to, like that's your choice, then go. You could probably make that choice today and be gone in 
matter or no time. You ever seen a family member that it gets released by their family and says, you don't have to be here, daddy. You don't have to be here, mama. You do what you want to do. And they tell you what they want. Peace. Come. I've watched people that want to go, they're perfectly healthy, and, and a loved one goes, and, and just they just don't want to be here anymore. They've made up their mind. They're just that quick. Your choice is powerful. Death, it says, what can separate you from the love of God? Even in death, he, Christ holds you, okay? Even in life. Hmm. So life, you mean life? Well, it's just the way, yep, they hold you. There's, there's not an angel. There's not a demon. There's not a power. There's nothing. What, you could say, what could separate you? So who? And what? Did you know that there's, there's a lot of time in Matthew chapter 6? Let's just let's go cruise there real quick. Matthew 6.31. It's a popular passage. My computer says that. It's kind of cool. Matthew 6.31. It says, uh, now, so again, we're talking about a fight. The war, we've been talking about voices. Last week, we talked about the war of worlds. And, and this week, again, this is, the, this is the only test. And it is the love test. It is the love test that you and I fight. Of are we gonna, our love for the Lord and our love for people. And it starts, 1 John 4, 19, of knowing how much we're loved. Okay? And knowing how much God loved us. For the, yet, while we were yet sinners, he died for us. It knows, we, we find our example in Christ. Christ came to display the Father. The Gospels are wonderful to see the Father. To see how he talks to a woman at a well, a slut. It's not what he said. Did you hear me? That's not what he said. Yeah, but don't you know, didn't she, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one? Are you counting? Because he didn't. If he was counting, he wouldn't have came. You know what he was counting on? The whole time, the whole Bible is written about his love and his plan of redemption to redeem what he loved. That's crazy. That's crazy. Let me receive that. Let me receive that. If I would know that, there would be such joy. And I wanted to get to this. I didn't know how. I don't even. There would be such joy in the church. In a, in a, a joyful church. A joyful church is one that has a connection with their buds. With everyone that got, listen, you're not joyful when you can do that, but you carried that with you to your house. You carried it everywhere you go. It's to weaken you. It's to weaken your it's not only to, to weaken you, it's to plug your ears, but it is to weaken you. Because the war that we're fighting is not down here. God's love for us. Listen, a joyful church is a strong church. The joy of the Lord, the Bible tells us in Nehemiah, it's your strength. In His presence is fullness of joy. He's coming back. Uh, listen to this. The joy of the Lord tells us, the Bible tells us, is full of glory. Heavy with everything good. The joy of the Lord is just full of glory. Joy. Strength. A strong church, a fighting church. You, I just can't make it. I just can't. Oh, listen, you're right. You can't. 
but he that's in you. He that's for you. He's in you because he's for you. Because he's for you. Because Christ came. And so, I, and so he that's in you and is for you is greater. And it's your strength. And it's your strength to stand. And having done all the stand, you can stand there for the promise. The promise. Guys, we got to become a strong church. we got to unclog our ears. We need to let go of some of the who's. We need to stop counting our, all the trespasses. We need to stop recounting. If I recount anything to anyone, I'm counting. And the, what I need to do at that moment when I see that, again, test the spirits. Test. This is your test. This is the only test. If you're recounting, when you see that, oh, thank you, Lord. Lord, I just, right now, I forgive Ben. Is it okay that I'm real? I forgive Ben. And you know what I come to find out? I could have asked. I realize how deceptive this anti-Christ is. That he's not for my good. He's about separation. He's a liar and the father of lies. And his goal is to produce in my life not joy, not peace. We need to start testing the, the breath. The Spirit being led by the Spirit, by understanding the fruit. Listen, I have a picture I want to show. I still have a little bit of time. I love to garden. I just brought back, sorry Hope if you're listening. Travis gave me two pumpkins, (laughs) two, not just one. Big pumpkin. And, uh, A lot of times, we don't know what we're growing. You know, the fruit is not the seed, but the seed produces the fruit. You know, in the beginning, he talks about seed that would bear fruit. Even this. And, and you can take time to look in this. In Galatians chapter uh, 5, verse 22 and 23, he says, Now the fruits of the Spirit, love, this is amazing, brings about, these are the fruits that are in you that produce the fruits that are on display. Look at these, look at this. The fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Word of God, the fruit of you hearing the right breath. Listen, you hearing the right breath, you listening to God's voice, it'll, pro- this, his, his, his words, his, the Spirit of, of Christ, the Spirit of God, when He speaks, it is a seed. We see in Mark chapter 4 about the sower sows the, the seed. The sower sows the word. He likens the word of God to a seed. And when you receive the seed, you're going to find it's the love. Go back. Sorry, 22. I don't mean that rudely. When you receive the, the seed of the spirit, you're going you're gonna to find that it's a word of love. A word that, that is it, it, from the inside. There's a joy. I'm not talking about happiness. I'm not talking about happeningness. Okay? I'm talking about that which is in you. A joyful person is a kind person. It's seen. Fruit is what's seen. Seed is what's in. Fruit is what's seen. Seed is what's in. A spirit of whole... Or when, 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 when the spirit of God speaks... He speaks a word of love. So you want to go find out what God's speaking? Go to 1 Corinthians 13. Define love. About people. About Him. About you. About His love for you. Like, it's not just what you're supposed to do towards others. 1 Corinthians 13 is about His view to you. Wow. But when He speaks love, joy, and peace, all those words, uh, uh, shalom, wholeness, completeness, nothing missing, nothing lacking. You know how many promises the Holy Spirit brings that to remind us of what He said? That's what He was put here to do. And there's promises that are concerning our wholeness, that He came to give us life and life more abundantly. Zoe, God kind of life. 
Why? Because from the place of the seed, my life begins to become what? One that I have forbearance. One that there's kindness. And I, if, yeah, where, where there's goodness. Just being good. I didn't say, like Landon said, that they were good. I said that you're good. Like, goodness is coming for me. I'm not going to be good to you because you were good to me. I'm going to be good because of a seed that lives in me, which is the love of God that didn't count my trespasses against me. And so therefore, he didn't. What that seed of God's love in me now produces out of me goodness. You look at Galatians chapter 5 and you look at the, all these things. You see it's all the things on the outside. Define the action of peace. Somebody. Define the action of, of those beginning things. No, they're, they're outworked in all the other things. There's works on the outside. They're seen. The love of God, the kindness, the goodness, the faithfulness. The next verse. The loyalty. Let's call faithfulness loyalty. You ever had a friend that did something wrong? And you had to let your other friend know? That's not loyal. That's not faithfulness. Don't be the dog that bites. Be the dog that runs up to you after you got hit. Aren't you thankful for dogs sometimes to teach you some things? I had, about two weeks ago, I yelled because dog, my dog chewed up my front door because there was a thunderstorm outside, and she was, he was trying to get in. When I got home, I was ticked, and they're laughing. Nothing you can do about it. I said, you could take it serious, and they're laughing. Can, something you can do about it. I got to the point where I was just so angry, but then I would laugh, and then I was angry, then I was laugh. You know what that dog? Bad dog, bad dog. Stupid dog. You have ruined my life. Your kid, my kids like you better than they like me. Beethoven, if you haven't seen it. And you know that dog this morning? While I'm studying, while I'm just getting my stuff the rest of the way to this morning. He's got his head up on my lap. And the moment, the moment of where I threw out something. Anybody ever say something hurtful to you in a moment? He didn't let that moment define his actions to me. He's got his head up on the table next to me with these big getting scratched I just am happy to be with you gentleness that's one that I've been saying God let that one be birthed in me let me be gentle not harsh and you know you can try and eke it out when you try and eke it out you will be so frustrated with yourself you will come to the point to literally hate yourself. You ever, am I the only one that's ever been there when you've tried so hard and you just fail and you fail and you fail and you just, you're disgusted, absolutely disgusted with yourself. It could be about your gentleness and your tone. It could be about pornography and not the ability to control yourself. It could be about any one of these things. It could be, let me tell you, Christ in you is the hope of everything. It's the hope of glory. Thank you, Lord. So, I know there was a mouthful, but I wanted to really get this point across. It just felt like more than anything else this morning, God wants joy in our life. And joy in our lives is fine. And I, I wish I'd thank you, Lord, for even just the teaching of being led by the Spirit. I believe there was pieces you got about unclogging your ears with the care and, and so on and so forth. And, but joy. God wants you and I to have joy. To have joy. And, I, and so I don't know how to teach that other than I can just right now
decree something over you. That's just what I'm giving in my heart, just to release joy over us this morning. That, that there, it's, not a, it's not a putting something together upstairs. And I think that's even what was going on. It's like I'm trying to put something together upstairs and to where I went is upstairs. And I told him, I said, well, that was the last verse. I guess I'm just going to go ahead and throw that at the beginning because I don't know what in the world I'm doing. Because I don't have to know what I'm doing when I'm willing to be led. I don't have to know what I'm doing. I just have to be willing. I have to be willing to come under what he says. I just have to be willing to come under. And so even joy this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, just close your eyes. I thank you for joy. The joy that's a strength to these people, everyone that's listening to this message today. Thank you for joy. Joy in your homes. Joy in your marriages. Joy on your job. Joy in your heart. Unspeakable joy. No trace except for God's goodness in the name of Jesus imparted to us today. A strength to stand. A hope to endure. And a countenance. A countenance to shine. And to show forth your love. And to show forth your goodness. And for a connection. I just lift that up right now. Thank you for a connections. Connections with you. Father, I thank you even right now under the sound of my voice that there's connections, that there's hearts right now. If you're just, if that's you, you just got to reach your heart out. Just say, God, right now to him. Just tell him that you're coming to him. Father, I'm reaching out to you. I'm reaching back out to you. Your love has been reaching out to me this morning. I'm reaching back out to you. Just use the words of your mouth to, to, to give him lordship this morning. You, you tell him that he's your Lord. You, you tell him your love for him. Don't let me lead you. You let your heart, let God lead you that's been drawing you. Let your heart express it. Father, thank you for restoration. Thank you for that connection. Thank you for the connections among church members. I thank you for a rejoining and a restoring in the name of Jesus among, among the, the body of Christ. Those in this house, those that are beyond church. But Father, those in the church, in every house, that a voice would try to separate. I say no in the name of Jesus. Somebody tell me no in the name of Jesus. Somebody say it with me. Say no. No in the name of Jesus. Not in my house. Not on my watch. Not today. Not today. I thank you for connection again in families. Connection where there has been no feeling in marriages. Between children, sons and fathers. And daughters. Between, between parents and children. Thank you. Release that now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Jesus. I'm so thankful I came. I got ministered to this morning. I love that I even just getting to share. What an honor. What an honor to stand here. What an honor to be able to share with you and, and have God speak to me at the same time. And we love you guys so much. Um, you know, as much as something the Lord uh, was talking to Jeremy Pearson about, he's a good friend of ours, and about how I talk to you about God on the weekends, but I want you to know that we also talk um, to God about you. In other words, I talk to you about God, but also in our, when I say we love you, our prayers for your families for your finances, 
they're real. They're very real. And uh, we just love you guys. And the family that God's called us to and the body. And, and I, I know that there's joining. God's wanting to join. And I, here's the deal. He's coming back for a glorious church. Heavy with all things good. I mean heavy. That means houses full. Houses full. Full houses. Full churches. The church. Every piece. Every part. In its place. And I'm going to leave you with this. This week we get to uh, start on our addition. The tying of the youth building.